Fade out one. Fade in three. Pizza Flicks Television Division presents... nor important, but he is real, and what happened to him is important. His name is John Stanishevsky. This is his true story. The facts are documented in official government files. Eight million people, August 1944. Eight million people busy with a war, too busy to notice. A lonely girl on a busy street. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, miss. Oh, I didn't mean that. Oh, it's all right. It was my fault, really. I'm not used to this thing yet. So clumsy. Are you sure you're all right? I'm all right. Can I, let me help you. Get you off the street. Well, I've seen them leave the place like that, but I've never seen anyone carried into it. Are you sure you're all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Sure. Uh -huh. I'm all right. I knocked her down. Can you imagine? So clumsy. I bumped into her and knocked her down. Ah, it's a lot nicer in here than out on the hot street. And you both look warm enough to welcome a cold beer. Huh? Okay. Yeah. Come now. <laughs> Who are you? I'm nobody. That can't be. Why not? I'm nobody. <laughs> you look like somebody. Well, I used to be a long time ago. Thank you. My name is John Stanishevsky. I'm Dolly. Dolly Fogarty. Pleased to know you, Dolly. How do you do? You always use this, Dolly? I have a bone infection in my foot. It doesn't seem to want to get well. It's too bad. Mr. Stan... Mr. Stan... <laughs> John, why aren't you somebody anymore? Seems I'm a man nobody wants. What does that mean? Means I'm a man without a country. You know, uh, a stateless alien, they call it. I've just been released from Ellis Island. That's where I've been the past couple months. Well, why? What have you done? <laughs> Nothing, but... This has been going on for seven years, you know, in and out of Ellis Island. Well, I don't understand. Well, Dolly, uh, it started a long time ago. I'm a seaman in the Merchant Marine. But when I first come to this country as a boy, they stamped my shipping papers American. You know, because I spoke English. And I thought, that's enough. That made me American. Well, weren't you a... Aren't you an American citizen? No, I found out later that I wasn't. And I made one big mistake by swearing I was. So they said I committed perjury and put me in jail for one year. Well, you're out now. Can you apply for citizenship? No use. Well, but it was a mistake. You didn't know. I was convicted. That's all law cares about. I don't believe that. I believe the law is designed to help people, not to harm them. Well, what are you doing now? I'm uh, sailing ammunition runs now, you know, carrying troops back and forth. They call me Indestructible John because I've been torpedoed so much. You've been on ships that were sunk? Six times. And for this dolly, they say that maybe when the war's over, they won't be port. Oh, of course they won't. You'll see, they'll straighten everything out for you. I don't know. One little man. There's so many people in this big country to keep track of. One man can be so easily forgotten or, or lost. Well, there must be something we can do. We? Oui. I'd like to help you. 
I don't think anyone can help me. Will you let me try? You have so much trouble of your own. I should help you. Mm. That was really something. Pretty good then, huh? Best I ever tasted. I learned to fix this meal in Hong Kong. Now, tomorrow night, I'm going to fix you a meal that's very popular in Bombay. I may never get to see how the rest of the world lives, but in these past few weeks, I've certainly seen how they eat. Well, someday I'm going to take you to all these places, too, Dolly, that I sailed. And it's such a big world. It's so wonderful and, and strange, too. Now, first, I'll take you on a trip. Oh, nah, it's, it's no good. It's all right to dream, John. Uh, when the war is over, no one will care. I'm caught for the rest of my life. That's not true. You have as much right to live in peace and dignity as anyone else. No one will want me. No one. I'll want you. Always. And I'll always need you. Do you know what you are saying? Yes. I'm asking you to ask me to marry you. <laughs> I know I'm handicapped, but I have a dream, too, and a belief. Together we can do anything. Dolly, I... I can't ask you to marry me. I can't. They may throw me in jail again, or, or maybe even deport me, Dolly. No, they can't. You're a war hero, and we'll never let them forget that. Dolly, you have so much strength. Faith. But first things first, and what you need first is a good Irish wife. <laughs> well, you haven't asked me. Dolly... Don't leave. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we were married one morning in a neighborhood church. Away for a while from the crowd, from the war, almost from life itself. Our only tie to the roaring city was Father Dunn and Mr. O'Shaughnessy from the little bar. The first links in our chain of hearts. For a honeymoon, we toured the world on a plate. Every meal was a strange and exotic dish, and while we ate, John drew word pictures of the cities beyond the sea. But one day... Dolly, there's no coffee. I thought I got some. None here. And if I leave now, I can't guarantee the meal. Would you go down and get some? Sure, I'll go. John, give me the cane. You know I can't walk without it. You can, Dolly. The doctor says your leg is well and you can walk. But I can't. Dolly, believe me, you can. Now, you can take your time because dinner won't be ready for a while anyhow. It didn't take long, did it? John, you were right. I can walk. <laughs> All I need is your love. 
John lived through the violence and the lost days on the broad, lonely ocean. Victory came. V.E. Day. V.J. Day. The war was ended for everyone but John and me. Our war was just beginning. Okay, next. Staniszewski, John. Step out. Let me have your paper, Stanley Chesky. What's this? It's my sailing permit. It's expired. Where are your other papers? Your discharge papers, sailing orders. Well, I don't have any other papers. You see, they were lost. Lost? Yeah, at sea when my ship was sunk. You're an alien without papers, Stanishevsky. You can't go ashore. Well, now look, if I could go ashore, maybe you could get some papers. Sorry, it's against regulations. This man mustn't leave ship. Wait now, my wife, we, we live here right in the city. I fought for this country. You'll have a fair hearing, Staniszewski. When? That's not my department. We'll get word to your wife. I'll see to it. It's like I told you, they don't need me anymore. That isn't true. They'll be grateful once they find out who you are and what you've done. Well, how will I get off the ship to tell them? I'll tell them. You gave me back my legs and I'll walk for you wherever I have to. Dolly, you never should have married. Oh, of course I should. And I did. I got some dinner for you. That's nice. Thank you. Thanks. Nice. We have friends. We'll be all right. There's more. I baked a pie for you. We'll be all right. For the time being, Mrs. Staniszewski, your husband will have to keep sailing back and forth across the ocean. He can't get off the ship. Just sailing, not being able to set foot ashore in America or even France. No one wants me. I can't get him off the ship, but I can help him get a hearing. Thank you, thank you so much. Of course, you understand that if it goes against him, he'll be confined to Ellis Island until a deportation hearing. Ellis Island? You mean he can't stay home with me? I'm afraid not. It's the law. The law. You may begin. Your Honor. The case against John Stanishevsky is fairly conclusive. That will be for me to decide. Of course, Your Honor. As you can see by the records in the case, there's no immigration visa, no passport, no naturalization papers. In fact, very little data of any kind concerning his background. There's also a prison term indicated for perjury, declaring himself to be a citizen. He's been tried once for that offense. We shall not try it again. Naturally not, Your Honor. I've studied the facts of this case very carefully. I'm much more impressed with this man's war record than anything else that these papers might tell me. While it's true we must abide by the law, there are times when we must also temper the law with humanity. John Staniszewski, will you please rise? What do you have to say for yourself? 
I am an American. What do you wish done with this man? He's being detained pending a deportation hearing. Born in Poland, they don't want him. Lived in Germany, they won't take him. Last point of embarkation, Sherberg, France. They have no reason to admit him. We're studying the case, Your Honor, in an attempt to get him admitted to one of these countries. I'm most concerned over the helpless status of this petitioner. He's a human being who has a right to be someplace other than aboard a ship which for him never reaches home. Until the place of deportation is decided upon, I order John Staniszewski's release. Please come to my chambers. I'd like to talk to you both. I must warn you, Mr. and Mrs. Staniszewski, that your victory here today was only a small one. Life as an alien without a quota number has very little security. Each month, you must report to immigration. You won't be able to ship out of the country. Any job to be found is subject to 30% income tax. There's only one thing you can do. One thing that you must do. And it's a tough one. I think I know what you're going to say, Judge Burton. I think you do, Mrs. Staniszewski. Your husband must fight for his citizenship. Do you think, Your Honor, that we have a chance? Yes, you have a chance. But you're going to need a lot more help than almost anyone has a right to expect. We'll find it. I hope so. I am suggesting a man named Harold Johnson in the naturalization office. He'll help you. Go and see him. In the meantime, my office is open every day. My home number's in the telephone book. If you need me, please call day or night. I want to thank you, but I, I don't know how. Well, good luck. Thank you. What you'll be required to do is pretty staggering. You can't hire anyone to do it for you. There isn't enough money to hire anyone to do what you two must do. Whatever it is, we'll do it. You must retrace almost every step that John has taken in the last 30 years. To establish registry, you must duplicate all the papers that were lost, even some that John never even bothered to collect. You must duplicate all the shipping orders, all the discharge papers, all the visas. Get affidavits from landlords, employers, friends. But you mean right from the very beginning? Ever since you first came to the United States. But that's not possible. We'll do it. We began our walk back through the years, along the thousands of miles of shoreline ports John had sailed into, where he lived and embarked. Boston, Baltimore, Newport, Savannah, Mobile, New Orleans, Galveston, San Diego, San Pedro, San Francisco, Portland, Seattle, as we walked back through time, time still went forward with us. The world aged and we aged with it. We worked when we could at anything. We went without food often. Our savings never went beyond the next bus fare. But wherever we went, we added new names to our chain of hearts. We talked to shipping clerks and landlords about folks who were alive and people who were dead. We even had to find a name in a cemetery. It was 1953. We were back in New York. It had taken years. But at last we had gathered together all the documents we needed. Now it was time to see a lawyer. I can't believe it. I just can't believe it. It took us years, Mr. Mormon. Sometimes we almost gave up so long. That's the incredible part of it, really. If it had taken you less time, all this would have been valueless. You see, until this year, there was a law. No deportable alien could ever be a citizen. There's been an amendment to the law. It's possible now. Well, Mr. Johnson didn't tell us. I know why he never told you, or I can guess. No just cause is hopeless. If he had told you about it, he might have given up the fight. Now we're in business. Mr. Mormon, about the money, I must tell you that we're not... Later, when John sails again. 
thank you. That's very nice. You're very welcome. The next heart in the chain belonged to a top immigration official. I can't believe this, Mr. Mormon. You must have had a network of very efficient staff members to compile such a volume of data. Well, your compliment is misdirected, sir. I had nothing to do with it. Mr. and Mrs. Staniszewski did it themselves. Why, that must have taken at least five years. Eight. I'm recommending you for a final hearing. But I must caution you. There's always delay. This amount of material, it, it may take a year or more. We've lived with delay. We'll wait. Everything goes so slow. How much longer we have to wait, Dolly? John, you must be patient. Patient? I have no more patience. There must be somebody who can help us. Some way to make things go faster. There is. What are you going to do? Write a letter. Who to? The President. Dear Mr. President, I have a problem. It is a big problem, and I hope that you will graciously find time to consider it. In the last eight years, my husband and I have worked tirelessly with the Immigration Department. He has received a recommendation for citizenship, and a naturalization date was to have been set. There's been a delay. Why, we don't know. John has served this country well in the war. He was a seaman and carried troops and ammunition. He cannot sail any longer because he has no papers. I'm sure that with just one word from you, we could find the happiness we seek. President Eisenhower sent my letter to the Immigration Department in Washington with a recommendation to expedite. On March the 8th, 1954, John appeared for his final hearing in the court presided over by Judge Sugarman. March the 8th was also the feast day of St. John of God, my John's name saint. I was certain nothing could go wrong. Will the new citizens to be rise, please? Is John Staniszewski present? Yes. Yes, sir. Mr. Staniszewski, will you please remain seated until the other petitioners are sworn in? Please rise. I've read your case thoroughly, Mr. Staniszewski. I should like to ask you only one question. Why do you wish to become an American? How could John possibly find the words? How could he say that despite everything that had happened to him, through all the years of struggle and despair, he had found the heart of America. I, I, I don't know how to, how to, to say it. I, I feel that I have never been anything else. I am an American. Petition granted. Thank you. Thank you. And then my John was sworn in as a citizen of the United States. Not as part of the crowd, but alone. With our friends, our chain of hearts, some of the many untiring people who made possible the happiest moment of my life.